As you guys know, we've been making our way through the AMD software package, trying to dissect every single feature and explain how they work. And today we're honestly gonna be talking about one of my personal favorites, Radeon Boost. Honestly, this is a feature that should be on in most PCs running AMD GPUs for a very good reason. But we're gonna have to discuss that after we run our intro because uh, here it is. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie and you are watching Greater Than Pi. So what is Radeon Boost? Well, Radeon Boost is a feature that was slipped into the AMD Adrenaline software after its major update. Turning it on actually enables a very specific set of features that have kind of been present for a very long time. What it does is it enables something called dynamic resolution scaling. What that means is dynamically, the resolution changes based off of the frames per second on your computer. Now I know that that sounds kind of weird and a little wonky like, what, when I'm playing the game, it's just gonna suddenly drop in resolution? Yes, actually, it yeah, kind of is how it works. You see, fundamentally, what it does is it makes your system a little bit easier to run temporarily at points in which the system would regularly struggle. Essentially, Radeon Boost isn't really there to boost your frame rates, but to boost the consistency of your frame rates. And there are actually times where I find it extremely useful. I've mentioned ESO on this channel several times before, and that's because it's a game that I've used for testing a lot of these features, as it's kind of necessary. Radeon Boost actually helps with a lot of the laggier moments that can happen in this game. Even my system, Supernova, struggles at running some of the more intense, higher player count encounters that I've played through in this game. I have lagged through so many in the past that is not even funny. But to say it just dynamically changes everything would kind of be a lie. You see, Radeon Boost doesn't work that way. It doesn't just change the whole image from 1080 to 720 or 1440 to 1080. And so the more resolution you have to play with, the harder it would be to tell whether or not anything has even changed. In fact, actually, if you combine Radeon Boost with Radeon Image Sharpening, I almost never really notice. It's much like when you're watching a YouTube video and it suddenly drops in resolution a little bit to prevent stuttering, or even on Twitch, it happens a lot. Live streams are notorious for doing that by dynamically altering the resolution in order to compensate for the bitrate. But it still really isn't that simple. You see, the whole image doesn't actually change at the same time. It's actually broken up into a grid, sort of, and the number of squares is based off of the resolution as well. And so each square can dynamically change its resolution, and that is how AMD is able to kind of slip it in there without anybody really noticing. It deprioritizes things that aren't the focus in order to focus on the things that are. That being said, there was still room for improvement, and so AMD actually released Radeon Boost 2. Radeon Boost 2.0 is actually pretty interesting. It has to be done at a development level, but when implemented, essentially Radeon Boost 2 allows the developer to decide what is and isn't important. One of the games that does work with it is actually Borderlands 3. You see, Borderlands 3 is actually notoriously hard to run on its higher graphics settings. And because of that, Turning on Radeon Boost might be necessary in some areas. I often test in this deep city area because it's one of the harder areas to run. But enabling Radeon Boost kind of dynamically changes things based off of how you personally would be looking. The developers have figured out that you'd be looking somewhere down the center of the sites, and so the things on the outside of that are actually where the resolution kind of skews. This is actually also an effect that's done in VR already. It's done for development purposes where the things on the outside are actually slightly warped because they're a resolution that's lower and being stretched. It's fascinating to see how often this is actually done. I also mentioned consoles as well. Back in the last generation, the Xbox One and the uh, PlayStation 4 did this a lot, actually. They couldn't even hit 1080p sometimes, and so they would have to dynamically do texture uh, what is it called? Checkerboarding, that's what it was called. So 
In a sense, this is actually technology that's been around forever. But the weird part is, at the moment, only AMD is offering it, which is very unusual. That being said, should you use it? Yes, you, you should. The, to be completely honest, the number of AMD GPUs that can run games perfectly are pretty slim. And right now you might be hurting for a GPU and we're in the middle of a GPU shortage. I personally haven't been able to get one and I've been need, needing to upgrade Supernova because it's doing a lot of work on a 5700 XT. And even that GPU struggles. So realistically, like the only GPUs of AMDs that are pretty much able to run everything are probably the 6800 and the 6900. And maybe even the 6700. We haven't tested it yet, so we don't know. But the point is these GPUs are already hard to get and even worse, just came out. There's there's very few of them. Most of you guys I know are running like a 570 or a 580, um, which again was a great 1080p GPU, but you might be stepping up into 1440p. So if you are, this is a feature to turn on and just tweak around a little bit. It doesn't take very long to set something up where you have it scaling the way you want. And in most cases, you won't even notice it's on and your frame rates will just stay consistent. They won't go any higher. But at the same time, any feature to make it easier to game on your PC is a good one, especially when you can't just buy new hardware. But that's going to wrap it up for Radeon Boost. Honestly, it's a cool feature. I think you should use it. And it uh, honestly is just pretty awesome. And with that, we're gonna wrap up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. I actually just recently uh, launched this. This is some merch. Yeah, look at it. It's a dark color on a dark color. I have some other shirts as well. Uh, so yeah, if you wanna check that out and support the channel directly with it, uh, go right ahead. I would appreciate it. But other than that, um, we're gonna keep making awesome videos. Uh, up next for us is finally Radeon Anti-Lag. So we're gonna be finally tackling that topic last. I think that's the last one on our list. Yes, because uh, Fidelity FX isn't out yet, I don't think. Yeah, so from there, uh, we'll wait until that comes out and maybe when we get a new GPU, we'll look at Radeon ray tracing because uh, that's another feature that we have to take a look at. So I'm gonna sign out from here. Thank you guys again. Wolfie, out.